Hey everybody, I wanted to do a video talking about the manipulation tactics that are employed by narcissists, sociopaths, psychopaths. Uh, I think it's important to be aware of this stuff, especially for normal people who like don't think that way. I think it's important to know because I think that there is a power that comes from knowing things, right? Noticing intensifies. It's sort of like once you see something, you can't unsee it. So if you are aware of these tactics, they lose their power. You can start to recognize when it's being done to you and then it loses its power because you're not fooled by it. Um, I have a video I had put up uh, on my channel that I got some negative comments on because people didn't understand like what I was trying to say with that. That video is called How to Dominate in Any Situation. I will uh, link it in the video description. But the purpose of that isn't to tell people to um, you know, use dark psychology all the time. Like there is a time and a place for things and sometimes it is appropriate to use manipulation. Manipulation in and of itself isn't inherently good or bad. We're always being manipulated uh, or influenced by things. Uh, it depends on the intent of the person doing the manipulation and uh, how they're manipulating somebody. So, you know, if I say to somebody, if I manipulate somebody into someone that is obese into uh, eating healthier, for example, is that a bad thing or was it a good thing, right? It depends, I think, on the situation. But in any case, it is good to know these things because once you're aware of it, um, you, can, you can see it in your own life and maybe it can help you in relationships that where you have to deal with somebody that maybe is a narcissist or a sociopath or a psychopath if you're ever unfortunate enough to come across these people. Um, and sometimes, you know, you have people like that in your life that you can't simply like uh, cut out of your life and walk away from them. It might be somebody that you have a child with, so you have to deal with that person. I think that it's important to understand uh, how how they manipulate people what and what they do. So I'm going to go over uh, 41 different manipulation tactics um, so that everybody's aware of it. And so you can, you can see it and then it loses its power over you. So number one would be lying. A lie is a false statement deliberately presented as the truth. Everyone knows what a lie is. Um, and some some of these narcissists or manipulators in general, we'll just say manipulators because it could be a narcissist, a sociopath, a psychopath, or it could just be a bad person uh, in general. But some sometimes they'll do and say anything to get what they want. And um, some of them are very good at lying. Like it comes naturally to them. Uh, a lot of these narcissists have superficial charm so they can come off as very charismatic and um, very good at imitating and feigning emotions, good at lying. Um, the other parts of lies is lies by omission. So instead of like saying something that is deliberately false, like a, a deliberately deceiving somebody, they're withholding the truth about something. Now, that could be a big deal, right? Because if they're withholding crucial information from you, you're not going to be able to make an informed decision. Uh, another thing they do is they'll make insinuating comments. They're really good at doing passive aggressive, subtle uh, manipulation. This is something that kind of gives them the ability to maintain plausible deniability or like, oh, I don't, I didn't have a, I didn't intend to say something hurtful. So they'll use sort of like innuendo, double entendres to confuse and hurt the victim, you know, to, to try to drain you emotionally, wear you down. And this also at the same time feeds their ego and their sense of power or control. Oh, what kind of emotional reaction can I get? How far can I push the boundaries? Uh, discouragement and criticism. The criticism isn't for negative behaviors, but rather to discourage positive outlets the victim may have to express themselves. So 
The goal is to crush the victim's self-esteem and isolate the person from anything that could give them praise or attention from others. They want to be the sole uh, source in your life for attention, love, validation, etc. Um, diminish and dismiss. The, so the victim's ideas or thoughts, opinions, even at times cries for help are either verbally dismissed or non-verbally. So like maybe they, they roll their eyes at you or they do the smug like smirk or they'll kind of like scoff at you. And, and the goal is to make you feel dismissed, overlooked, undervalued, or just ignored. Like you're not worthy of getting a response from them. What you said isn't even worth addressing. Um, and and the, the goal of that is to make you kind of less willing to voice your complaints or uh, express a desire for something or say, hey, look, I want you to do something. I want you to be consistent or I want you to do this for me. Of course, they don't want to have to do that. <laughs> they don't want to have to do anything that they don't want to do. Um, so that's the, the goal is to make you feel isolated or vulnerable and um, helpless with nowhere to turn to. Monitoring and stalking. Uh, this is like, this gets very scary if you're dealing with a a psychopath because they can be violent. That's not to say a narcissist or sociopath can't be violent either, but they typically use emotional abuse rather than physical abuse. But a psychopath could be a physical abuser. But um, the monitoring and stalking thing, uh, in extreme cases, like the, the manipulator is always present. They're kind of lurking behind your back. They're they're watching what you're doing online. You know, they're keeping an eye on you. Um, and if they're a psychopath, they might go as far as like hacking into your email or stealing your phone or installing a key logger on your computer or using some kind of like surveillance equipment to kind of follow your every move and just monitor what you're saying, where you're going, your comings and goings, who you're talking to, what you know, maybe they kind of want to be aware of like whatever's going on in your life or in your mind at a certain time. So they can be in, they can maintain control over you. Uh, there's a TV show um, it's called you like spelled Y O U. And it's about a guy who I believe is a sociopath. Um, and I haven't watched the whole thing. So like, I, I don't know what happens later on, but just from what I've seen in the first couple episodes, he's sort of like obsessed with this girl he wants to date. And he goes to these extreme lengths to monitor and stalk her. He kind of scours her social media. He learns like, you know, he'll look at like who her friend lists are. He'll learn things about her friends. He'll, he kind of follows her around in person. So he looks like he just accidentally randomly bumps into her. Oh, fancy seeing you here, right? How, how convenient, right? So he can start up a conversation with her. I think at one point when she's like drunk, he steals her cell phone and this gives him the ability to like gain access to the cloud. So when she gets a new phone, he still has access access to her her messages like her emails her messages etc and he uses that to kind of like manipulate her because he he knows like oh she goes on a date with him and she's telling her friends like what she thinks of him and this helps him kind of tailor his fake persona to kind of meet her idea of like what she wants even better so that can be <laughs> taken to extremes of course like terrifying intruding and interrupting so obviously this is where the manipulator just has no respect for another person's boundaries now of course they're going to expect you to respect respect their boundaries you know so this is they they don't want you to do this to them but they have no problem doing or saying whatever they want in front of you behind your back kind of regardless of your objections to that behavior or just like what's right and wrong in general like morality because a lot of them don't have that and the, 
a lot of this because if it's done covertly like you you don't know it's being done with the intent to hurt you maybe you just think oh they were just being rude or maybe they just had a bad day by the time you figure out that this is like a deliberate pattern of behavior with them it's kind of too late at that point like they probably gotten you a uh, invested emotionally or attached to them and the goal is to prevent you from maybe speaking up or trying to get support or making positive changes or maybe cutting them out of your life. Maybe they wait till you're already too invested, too attached to do anything about it. And so you just kind of accept it. Um, deflection, diversion, and evasion. So when the manipulator is asked a direct question or they're called out on a lie, they will deflect the conversation back on you. It's sort of like, how dare you accuse me of that? You know, so they don't really like answer for it. They don't take accountability or responsibility. They're just, you know, they'll or they'll steer the conversation onto like a totally different topic as a diversion. Like they'll just bring up some random thing like, oh, by the way, uh, this happened at work and, and I'm having a bad day. And then they'll like, oh, you should feel bad for me. And, and it, it's just or they'll say something like totally vague and like meaningless. So you ask them a direct question like, hey, you know, uh, were you seeing other people when you started seeing me? And instead of giving you like a direct answer, they'll say something like, hmm, that's hard to say. You know, I'm not sure. Oh, you know, and then they bring up something else. It's just to to never have to uh, say to be put on the spot and to give a direct answer to something. It's always this sort of swarmy, um, underhanded uh, lawyer talk, we we could call it, where they, they need to maintain plausible deniability, but still look like they're saying something or giving you a response, but there's nothing of substance there. And again, like, there, there will not be them taking accountability for, like, lying to you or doing something wrong. Um, amplification is another one where they kind of, like, your tiniest flaws or you know, mistakes or failures are amplified, but the positive things you've done or your successes are diminished. So it's it's just this uh, distorted way of looking at your of yourself and them. So accomplishments are unnoticed; they don't really talk about them. But your shortcomings are broadcast far and wide. Oh, did you know she did this? Oh, he did that. Uh, the goal, of course, is to kind of drain you of energy um, and make you doubt yourselves so they can be the center of attention while kind of belittling you. Um, emotional blackmail is a big one. So they, uh, narcissists, psychopaths, sociopaths, and we'll just say manipulators in general, they tend to be really good at like reading people. They'll be able to know like your fears your wants, your desires, they can kind of like look at someone and kind of like size them up, right? They can read them pretty quickly and that gives them the ability to kind of know like, hey, this person has a fear of abandonment or this person has a need to feel love and approval or this person has really low self-esteem. So I can make them feel self-esteem and then they'll come to me for to have that need met, right? So what they'll do once they kind of get you um, attached or invested in them and, uh, you know, they kind of maintain this mask in the beginning where they kind of present themselves as somebody other than something other than they are. And so that gets you, you know, you, you think that they, at times they appear to be the perfect person, right? Especially in the beginning when they're um, really like wearing that mask um, and kind of presenting themselves as like exactly what you would want or need in your life. Um, so then the once they have you kind of hooked, they'll withhold the emotional support that they know that you want or need, or they'll just like take it away altogether. And the goal of that is to get you scared to like upset them. Oh, they might withhold attention, you know, or, or validation. And it's kind of to make you feel 
guilty too and make you feel bad about doing something that upsets them. It's like a passive aggressive thing where they don't outright say, hey, you did something I don't like, don't do that again, or you're not gonna do that again. They don't have to say anything. They just withhold, they become cold and distant, and you instinctively know what to do to, because then they'll give the positive, you know, reinforcement, then they'll kind of give it back to you. They'll, they'll give you the, the attention, the approval, the validation. So you'll start to learn, oh, if I do this, that upsets them. And if I don't do this, or, or if I do this thing, or don't do this thing, this is when they're happy again, and everything is good. Like you kind of learn to adapt to their uh, demands, basically, without them having to verbalize them. Emotional barriers is another one. So anytime the victim gets upset and starts to kind of question their abuser or they complain about something the abuser is doing, the abuser turns the focus onto the victim's angerness uh, at, and like being upset. Like, oh, you're so sensitive. You're too sensitive. It's like demeaning your objection to being abused. Um, or they'll say things like, you're crazy. I don't, do, you know. You could also be attacked for being happy about something. Uh, like, oh, what are you so giddy about? The point is to get you to kind of question yourself and, of course, to take any attention or focus off of them so they don't have to answer for any of their wrongdoings or their abuse, and they can maintain control of you. Guilt tripping is another one. Um, this is where they suggest to you, the victim, you're somebody that's most likely empathetic and compassionate and a good person. They suggest that like, you don't care enough, or you're selfish, or you have more than them, or you don't treat them the way they deserve. You have it too easy and you didn't have the hardship they had. So you should feel guilty. You should feel bad. Um, and it's just to keep you in a state of like self-doubting or anxious, you know, maybe they'll ask you to do something one day and then the next day they're like, I can't believe you did that. Why did you do that to me? I didn't want you to do that. And they kind of make you feel guilty, make you feel bad. And they'll say, you took advantage of me. You know, it's things like this, um, inappropriate restrictions. So kind of holding somebody back from being able to like reach their potential, right? So for for a narcissist or just a a psychopath, sociopath, whatever, they need to be in, they need to feel like they're in control all the time and they need to control the people around them. And the reason for this by the way is because inside they feel a lack of control over themselves. So they have this like need to just control everything. Um so if they have like a partner, you know, that maybe is really smart and very talented and has the potential to be super successful, they'll tell that person, I don't like, you know, I don't want you working there or I don't like this circle of friends. I just don't think that they're good friends. So maybe these are people that could help you like professionally. They'll say, I don't, yeah, I don't like them. I don't want you to be friends with them. Why don't you do this? Or they'll tell you to do something that maybe you'd make less money or maybe they want you working like 60 hours a week so that literally all your time is spent at work. And then what little time you have left is spent with them, of course, because they need to have you isolated. And the point of this too is so that you are dependent on them uh, and, and unable to be completely, um, you know, free. Threats are another one. Now, they're, they're usually not like physical threats. Um, I mean, for a psychopath, maybe because they can be aggressive and violent, but for just a regular kind of narcissist or manipulator or just an abuser in general, they tend to be um, psychological or emotional in nature, sometimes social, right? Um, like social exclusion, right? Like we're, we'll shun you from the friend group um, and turn other people against you or they'll kind of... Uh, like they they do things like subtle threats, right? So they maintain plausible deniability, but it, it's good at getting you to change how you act 
like in the short term and it helps them take control of your life without having to physically hurt you. Another one is objectifying. The uh, abuser treats the victim as a tool or a toy to be used for their own purposes, like for their own sexual gratification or someone that they can damage and destroy just for fun because they like it and they like the feeling of power that that gives them. Uh, the goal, of course, is to dehumanize their victim um, and to kind of treat that person as an object because if you see them as an object, then you don't have concern for that person's feelings or experiences. And if you do this to somebody long enough over time, they start to see themselves as an object simply there for the amusement and pleasure of other people, which is very disturbing. Shame is another one. Um, it's, you know, they, they like to humiliate people. Uh, a lot of times they like to kind of publicly humiliate people with like little slide comments or put downs or, you know, they'll, they'll kind of make, uh, expressions of like disgust or contempt or disappointment often in front of other people to make you feel worthless and inadequate. And, you know, a lot of this, there's, there's cycles, right? There's kind of shame and rage cycles or whatever. Uh, blaming is another one where, the victim is told that they're responsible for like the abuse that they're suffered. Like, oh, you brought that on yourself or you made me do that. I didn't want to do that, but you made me do it. Or really you deserve that and, and you needed that. And I was, do <laughs> I'm doing it for your own good. Sort of something like that. Or, or you know, it, it's to put the victim on the defense and it also makes you look, makes a victim look and kind of feel guilty while at the same time masking the abuser's malicious intentions because they're saying, you know, I didn't want to do that to you. You made me do it. It's actually your fault. Like, I, I'm not to blame. <laughs> You're the one to blame. Invalidation, uh, whatever pain the abuser has put you through either didn't happen or it wasn't as bad as you're making it out to be. You're, you're overblowing it or, you know, you are, you're making a big deal out of it because you're just too sensitive. And they might say things like, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but not saying I'm sorry I did that to you or I'm sorry that I did that. There isn't any taking accountability um, or anything like that. And, and it's just kind of like dismissing what has happened as if it's not a big deal. And the goal is to kind of get you to question yourself like, oh, maybe it wasn't that big of a deal. Maybe I did, you know, uh, overblow that fight or whatever. Uh, another thing that they use, this kind of passive aggressive silent treatment. So they'll like refuse to communicate with you and then they'll use emotional or physical withdrawal to kind of punish you. The goal, of course, is to convey um, contempt and like communicate to you that like you're not even worthy of a response. You know, I'm going to ghost you for a couple days or I'm going to disappear, go out of town for a couple days and leave you by yourself. And, you know, the, the goal, of course, is to make you feel like to induce feelings of like abandonment, rejection, or to cause like a feeling of tension that can only be resolved by you changing your behavior to get them to kind of come back. And you like, it's like making you feel starved for their attention and affection and love. They also use negative reinforcement. So they will only give positive attention on a random basis to keep the victim off balance emotionally. There isn't any consistency uh, to their uh, positive um, attention. So that is to, you know, that allows them to increase their control over the victim by making them kind of desperate for your love and attention. They might purposely make you feel jealous of somebody else to kind of get you to feel like you're in a competition for their attention or to kind of like get you involved and, you know, and make you maybe feel more than you normally would for them. So uh, another one is positive reinforcement. If they give you a gift, you know, or 
it's because they expect something in return or it's to trick you into making you think that they oh he really does care you know and it's like yeah it's like they're buying your compliance you know or it, it might not even be a gift it might just be like they they'll use their attention approval their money or their superficial charm feigned interest feigned concern for you oh are you having a good day can i help you with anything um you know the goal of course is to to show you that like if you fail to comply with their demands it could be painful but if you do what they want oh look it can be really good as well um it's very similar to hurt and rescue. So like a drowning person will like grab at anything to try to survive. So for the abuser or the manipulator, they'll push you in the water and then they'll be the one that's there to throw in the, the, uh, the like life raft to you or throw in the rope to like rescue you. So they'll, it's not necessarily putting somebody in physical harm, but like making them feel really bad and then creating a feeling of tension that that person will want to resolve and they'll come to you to like resolve that tension. You know, it's like getting this hot and cold type thing to kind of get you to rush to them to make you feel better. And it's also to kind of fool you into trusting them, believing them, becoming dependent on them. And a big part of that is love bombing. Love bombing is when, and this often uh, occurs in the beginning of a, a relationship with a narcissist or sociopath or psychopath or just an abuser in general, they will kind of heap lavish uh, displays of like attention or affection upon you. Like, oh, you're, you know, I just can't help myself around you. And in they're appealing to your vanity, but also like your insecurities as well. Um, sometimes they can be very extreme, like, oh, I feel like you're my soulmate. Like, I think you're the one. Or they'll say they love you, like, right away. Um, or they'll say, like, oh, man, like, I just have such intense feelings for you. And the goal is to kind of override your critical thinking. Um, so you're not saying, hey, let's slow down a bit. Let's get to know each other first. It's like, you know, zero to 60. And uh, the goal, of course, is to control and manipulate you and get you in a state of dependence on them. You know, it's sort of like they'll bring you really high and then they'll kick you and knock you down. So they'll tear you down and then build you back up so that you're on this sort of like emotional roller coaster. And these in what feel like intense feelings are associated with them. And maybe you think that that's like, passion or whatever uh crazy making is another one where the abuser kind of does or says something and then later denies that that ever happened like uh i didn't do that you're crazy and you know that they did you're it's to get you to question your own sanity and perception of reality and it's to kind of drive you crazy over time uh that's also really similar to gaslighting so Gaslighting is when information is twisted or spun. Uh, it could be selectively omitted to favor the abuser or false information is presented with the intent of kind of making the victim doubt their own memory or perception or sanity. Like they'll say something to you one day like, oh, I don't want you to do this. And then the next day they say, how come you're not doing this? And you're like, I thought you said you didn't want me to. And they say, I never said that. What are you talking about? And it's just to get you to, to, to the point where you believe that you don't have a reliable memory and that they're the person that you need to turn to to remember if something happened correctly. So you're kind of going to them for your sense of like what's real and, and what really happened. And again, so you're dependent on them and you don't have high self-esteem. You feel insecure with yourself. Rationalization is another one where the abuser tries to like justify and make excuses for their bad behavior. They either create like false reasons or the like you know, switch things around, you know, to try to make it look like when they did something really bad that actually like, oh, it was understandable. Maybe it's more acceptable or appropriate 
by the way that they try to spin it. Like, yes, I um, disabled your car so you couldn't get to work on a day that you had a presentation. But I only did that because I knew that you were going to do badly and I wanted to save you that humiliation. So actually, I did it for you because I care about you. It's that kind of, you know, bizarre, like justification for what they're doing in a way that makes them look like oh maybe that they they did something wrong but it was with good intentions right it's like that um infantilizing is another one where they kind of they'll treat you like you're a child they'll talk to you like you're a child you know oh, like you don't know you just you're just a little too naive you know i don't want you to be friends with these people can't you see that they don't really care about you i know that you're very naive and i know you tend to be gullible you just don't understand people like i do you know it's to reduce you to the state of like you're an infant and a child and it puts them in a higher position right in a position of th authority and power over for you you know and they try to make you feel that way also because as children we are dependent on our parents for survival and for love and attention and affection we need that and they want to be that person in your life that you need and depend on uh, triangulation is another one so that's where like if you have one family member that is an abuser or whatever uh, or a friend they won't communicate with you um, or they'll be friendly with you, but then turn other family members or friends against you. Uh, you know, it, it's sort of like spreading rumors behind your back to other people and then kind of causing this like uh, divide and then it's like a divide and conquer type thing. So they're controlling the situation, pitting people against each other. And of course, the goal is to isolate you. Another one that they do is called splitting. It's just like black or white thinking or kind of all or nothing thinking where they will say something like, you've never done anything for me. Now, obviously, this isn't true, um, but it, it's sort of like you, they will omit anything positive and only only uh, remember negative things that happen. So they'll, their mind, and I don't even know if some of them uh, do this on purpose or subconsciously but it's like they erase all the positive and then they amplify all of the negative things so it's you're strictly good or strictly bad you know um a double blind is part of that so a double blind is when you kind of put a victim in a situation where like they're damned if they do and damned if they don't so regardless of like what they say or what choice they make it's always the wrong one and they should have done something else you know it the goal is to like beat the victim down psychologically and emotionally make them question their own intuition and judgment but it's also to put them in a position of no matter what they're in the wrong and the abuser is right so they might say something like um you you don't do anything for me and you'll say that's not true of course i do and then maybe you start listing some of the things you have done for them and then they'll turn around and throw it back at you and say oh so you only did those things so you could use them against me in the future and, and it's like, what? So like, there isn't a right answer that you could give them. They'll somehow always throw it back to you and it will always be wrong no matter what. They'll say, maybe they'll say things like, I feel like you use me and you don't care about me or my feelings. And you'll say, well, that's not true. Of course I care about your feelings. If I didn't care about how you feel, why would I do this? Why would I do that? And they'll say, oh, you only did that to manipulate me. So like, there isn't a right answer. You're always wrong. They're always right. Um, double mindedness is another one where they seek uh, the sort of like the double advantage of being able to do no wrong, of being able to have their will, of letting their passions rage, and having the hypocritical advantage of seeming to be good, helpful, or supportive. So it's like saying one thing, but then doing another, doing to other people what they don't want done to them. 
double think is another one so that's sort of like oh to know and not know to be conscious of complete truthfulness while at the same time telling carefully constructed lies to hold simultaneously two opinions which cancel each other out knowing them to be contradictory but believing in both at the same time, to use logic against logic, to repudiate morality while also laying claim to it and to um, virtuousness, to forget whatever is necessary that they forget in the moment, and then to conveniently bring it back into memory again, right at the time that they need it, and then promptly forgetting it again, you know? And then it applies to that process itself, where, Oh, they're doing it, but they're not doing it. Um, covert, aggressive abuse. So um, this is like when they'll do something where they'll like insult you, but they'll say like, oh, I'm, I was doing that to, to help you actually. Like they'll present it, they'll disguise it as like they're teaching you, they're giving advice, they're offering solutions. It gives them the appearance of like, being sincere in their trying to help especially to others but then they can follow it up with like snide comments or put downs or you know like saying oh you really disappointed me or whatever it's, it's to make you feel inferior to belittle you so they can control you and then have the appearance of like being virtuous while they're doing it like well i'm doing this for you Another thing they do is setting the victim up to fail. So they want you in a state of like stress so that it's almost certain that you're going to you're going to fail um, or you're going to be discredited or something. So if they know, for example, that like you've got a really important day the next day, maybe you have to give a presentation at work and this is something that you've been working for that's very important to you, they will purposely pick a fight with you the night before and they'll keep the argument going. They'll have you arguing till three o'clock in the morning, knowing that you have to get up early and do this presentation. So they'll make you feel, you know, totally drained, emotionally drained. They'll put you in a state of like feeling physical tension, almost like so that they know the next day that you're going to fail. Um, yeah, it's so it's just a, a way to undermine you, but then pretend that that wasn't their goal, like that it just, oh, I didn't mean to, you know, have a fight with you, you know, the day before, a, a very big day for you. Um, they do things like moving the goalposts, so it's just this constantly shifting reality um, that you, where you can never, you can never win. Uh, they'll feign innocence or confusion when that's convenient for them. So they'll they'll try to deny that anything they did was intentional or that they did the thing that they're accused of. They might go, what? Like, I don't know what you're, I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, they'll play dumb, like, um what you know and pretend to be confused like pretend they forgot something that happened uh, just to make you feel crazy to get you to question your own judgment and your own reality another thing they do is they'll vilify their victim a really good example of this would be johnny depp and amber heard if you followed that case where johnny was the victim and amber completely vilified him and said no actually he was the abuser and i'm the victim uh, of course, that's to make the victim, uh, putting, putting the victim on the defense while masking the aggressive intent of the manipulator and the abuser. So they falsely accuse the victim of actually being the abuser. When the victim tries to stand up for themselves or defend themselves, um, it's the, the goal is to build resentment or um, suspicion or concern about the victim prior to them coming forward, right? Uh, putting them on trial before they're even aware something's wrong, making them feel guilty enough to question their position, like, you're the bad guy here. I didn't want to hit you, Johnny. You made me do it. Playing the victim, same thing. 
The abuser portrays himself as a hapless victim of circumstance or that they did something, but they only did that because somebody else made them do it or it was the only way for them to handle this just crazy situation that they just happened to find themselves in or they claim that they were just taken for a ride by the person that is being manipulated. So like Amber would say, oh, Johnny just manipulated me. He was older than me. And he just, you know, took me for a ride. I was a young, naive girl. I just didn't know what I was getting myself into. Meanwhile, she's the abuser here. And she's trying to gain pity, sympathy, compassion, while at the same time escaping the blame for her wrongdoing. And uh, confusing unsuspecting outsiders and getting support from them minimization is another one that uh, is denial um, coupled with gaslighting where the abuser maintains that their behavior isn't really as like harmful or irresponsible or bad as someone else is claiming um, oftentimes they um, downplay their behavior by like comparing it to what somebody else did. Well, at least I didn't, you know, kill your cat or whatever. It's just to kind of, you know, pretend that they didn't do anything bad in escaping the feeling of guilt. Um, another thing could be, uh, you know, kind of getting somebody in almost like a, and this sounds like a weird thing to say, but almost in a trance-like state where they are, they especially if they're a psychopath, they have the ability to do this, have an intense presence and sort of like laser-like focus on the victim that can induce a trance-like state where the victim becomes hyper-focused on the manipulator and vice versa. You know, this is something that we would call like a toxic relationship or something where, you know, you see like this unhealthy attachment or um, putting somebody on a pedestal or whatever. Um, everything they say and do seems undeniably right, if for no other reason than the pure force of willpower, because they're that good at like you know, asserting themselves to render their victims, like, psychologically defenseless. Um, now, this, th these, like, weird trances they induce can be seared into the victim's psyche and difficult to recover from. Brandishing anger is another one where they'll kind of explode in these acts of, like, furious rage you know their fury they'll unload like verbal abuse on you in such a way that it's like dit, 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 dit. you know it's just kind of spewing out at them and the goal is to kind of wear you down to exhaust you to confuse you um and it's to make you want to to train you to avoid upsetting them or confronting them about what they do or contradicting them ever again. It's like, well, you won't do that again, will you? I'll, I'll make it so painful for you that you won't want to do that. Brainwashing is another one where over time they turn the mind of the victim into their mind view, into their worldview, make them question everything and realign themselves to the viewpoint of their abuser. Um, you know, you could look at Stockholm Syndrome as part of that, where the victim defends their abuser and idealizes them and says, no, actually, he's great. He's wonderful. Uh, scapegoating is another one um, where the abuser subjects their victim to constant negative treatment and blame that they don't deserve. And they unconsciously like project their own like feelings of uh, anger, rage, guilt, shame onto somebody else so that they don't have to feel those things. They project their uh, insecurities, their self-hatred onto somebody else. Um, I think that that's pretty much it for now that I want to get into. Um, uh, these are all things that I'm sure everybody's aware of. You've probably heard of them before, but I think it's really good to, to consider how they can be used together in connection with them. I think that most of this stuff, 
everybody tends to do to an extent like it's just natural for somebody to not want to take responsibility when they do something wrong or to maybe minimize or downplay if they made a mistake or something like every single thing will be something that every person does to a tiny extent but never to the extent that a narcissist, sociopath, or psychopath will do. They take things to an extreme. They do it all the time, and you'll notice patterns of behavior. You'll notice cycles. You'll notice that they do it again and again. You'll notice that there's never leeway. There's never a back and forth. It's always seemingly everything has to be their way. You'll you'll know the difference. Um, once you see and recognize this stuff, you'll know when someone's doing it intentionally or when they're doing it unintentionally. And I think that's the most important thing um, as far as, you know, recognizing this stuff goes. Anyways, um, I hope you guys have a good day and I'll talk to you all later.